everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Master Race Debaters. I'm Gavin Stevens. This week, Be Black and I welcome a very special guest, Chloe Roy from the Chonilla Podcast. He drops by and we talk, uh, we talk some interesting stuff. He's very insightful. He's very funny. We talk about his podcast. We talk about Scoop 60. And in our White Tears segment, we talk about Sarah Huckabee Sanders getting kicked out of restaurants. Is that the right thing to do? Should we do that? I think we should do that. Anyway, without further ado, here we go. Let's get into it with Clove Roy from the Chonilla Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate and vanilla. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Yeah, it's all yours, B. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. So I just, I've been known, okay. So Chalila for a while. And, and uh, while doing MRD podcast, I've, it was been itching on my mind. Uh, you know, these two guys need to know each other. Um, just to give you a quick background, when I started sh- uh, Shut Up Podcast and uh, finally tweeted about it, then um, Shirley from Chinilla finally you know, or holler at me and said, "Hey, fellow Canadian podcasters, uh, podcaster, we're we're Canadian, so let's be friends." Type of thing like that, and uh, that gave me the pat on the back that that this podcast thing might work. Now having Gavin on on episode eighty six kind of made me feel like King Jong Un <laughs> after after Donald Trump visited him. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like a legitimized <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather so here we are with today, Tom's man. Here we are today. That's my point. That's the, and uh, <laughs> Gavin here and holy matrimony and whatever. I'm I'm uh, glad you used the I'm Trump in this analogy. That's my parents would be proud of me knowing that I'm <laughs> Trump in your analogy. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> my bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the only part is yeah, yeah. It's it's to legitimize as a podcaster, and I should also mention that uh, the Chanilla is also friends with a lot of people from the French uh, comedy scene. Mm. Um, so you guys know a lot of the same people. Just you know. Yeah, we had a few people on CJD when we were doing that uh, guest hosting thing. So, so you guys, you guys were doing it for five years, or is that correct? Yeah, it was. It was um, close to five years, or just over five years. And then, you, and then you took. A, a, and now you've been on hiatus for three years. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had to um, focus on the kids. Like, there was a lot of, like, crazy shenanigans going on with the Quebec school boards, and um, you can Google all that, and you can find all that stuff out. But, uh, yeah, it was pretty bad, and uh, I got an opportunity to transfer with my work, so we came through and uh, focused uh, on the kids. Yeah, that that makes sense. You know, kids are forever podcasts, you know. You can do that anytime. (laughs) You can do a podcast anytime. It's a hard thing to do a podcast. It's really hard. It's fun and rewarding, but god damn it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Hey, uh, Club, real quick, what would you say is like the central theme of the Chinilla podcast? What's it? It would be the difference of perspective through like everyday life. Yeah. 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 I this I I'm I'm I kind of I was saying um, before we stopped recording that I I I came into this and with my head down just bulldozing and I I would imagine it's it's extremely hard to be uh, to do a podcast of color here but I was reading articles in the states about how to be uh, to get on the major networks it, it's uh, it's really hard because the only the I, I guess it's a tokenism that's all they want they don't want uh, the stories from black podcasters. They want mm-hmm. to, they want they want to bring them in to tell stories about uh, where 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 they need a black voice or they need a person of color, but they don't want to focus on them without using the white gaze. Is that the same thing here? Is that it, it, like getting onto CBC or your podcast being you know in a major network? Is that is that the same kind of deal that you have to deal with here? Yeah, I would think so. Like Shirley handles most of that stuff when she's dealing with like uh, who she wants to network with or who she wants to bring in the fold. But um, for the most part here, we've definitely like any type of like um, interaction we've had with corporations and stuff. It's it sounds exactly like what you're describing in terms of like having to present yourself, having to sell it, having to, you know, come up with the elevator pitch, having to be ready for them to, you know, do whatever they do. But yeah, it's 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 kind of a headache. Mm. Do, can you talk mm. honestly like when when you're say you're pitching to an advertiser or something can you can you talk can your podcast have an honest discussion about racism and them go and the the, the advertiser go hey yeah yeah that, that's perfect 
Yeah. Well, when yeah, when we talked about uh, getting advertisers on the show, we made sure to let them know that this is what they could expect. You know, we want it to be fully transparent. We didn't want to like dupe an advertiser and mm-hmm. then they turn around and say like, oh, you know, you you guys kind of t- talked about this topic and we don't agree with talking about that topic, so we're going to pull our stuff. We'd always be like straight up and say. No, this is this is who we are. This is our brand, yeah. and we'd like you know for you to advertise with us. But if you can't, then right. <laughs> you refer to Ivanka Trump as a feckless cunt. Yeah, we can't have that. <laughs> and uh, I noticed like, you have like a, a friend list or a network list. Uh, these are all podcasters. I guess you've networked or worked with before or some kind of, uh, yeah. And anybody that we felt, you know, was like, um, that we messed with or we listened to their shows or, uh, or we, even if we just enjoyed their, their podcast, we would uh, put it on that list. Thanks. Yeah. What's well, a little impressive. List. How many of them were Canadian though? Was it, uh, I didn't, I didn't bother counting or were they more American podcasts? Um, you remember they were more American. Yeah. There wasn't very many Canadian ones on there. Yeah, they, 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 uh, yeah. I, I wonder how many. Like, I guess there, there's got to be there's there's got to be a lot that we haven't heard, like a black Canadian right. podcast. Or I, I yeah. always wonder how many are out there. Yeah, yeah. That's one. They really started a uh, thing called Black Canadian Content Creators. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. yeah, and she, it's basically a hub where that exactly for that reason. Hmm. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 it, yeah. That that yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> a, a, a podcasting. Uh, I was I was reading the the, um, the articles and the, the they were saying that it's a, there's a lot of black podcasting, but you're not going to hear it because they're not getting that push. Uh, mm. But I guess that, in a way that's also podcasting. So it's also you know you 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 have podcasting is hard enough, and then you have that extra. Uh, added uh, uh, race element to it, which act- actually puts a little bit, uh, make it even more difficult, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah, I mean, when we try and discuss things, I mean, Shirley's gotten feedback from people, uh, you know, even in her Black Canadian content groups, where, you know, it's kind of like just being upset with us just because we're talking about it. And it's like, well, that's, that's kind of too bad. Really? Yeah. yeah. Huh. Wait, I like, who who's upset? Who, who uh, Oh, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to throw any names out, but Oh, wow. We've like, received, oh, we've received emails of people that are just like, you know, you, maybe you've breached too much over here or you know, you you're not talking enough about this, but Oh, oh okay, okay. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. yeah, but if it's Got a group, it. everyone can jump in and say whatever they need to say, right? Or I, I don't Right. Like, right, right. <laughs> it, yeah. it, it, the internet is a weird weird place. It's mm-hmm. where everyone's got an opinion. Everyone's upset with your opinion or lack yeah. of opinion. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> lack of opinion. Yeah. yeah. You're not putting, what do you mean? Not... You don't have an opinion about the whales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should. How come you not say shit about the whales? <laughs> Why would that you compare me to the Trump? whales? <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. That's the controversy we were looking for. All right. Thanks, Clo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This, 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 whole, this whole thing was about controversy. That's what. <laughs> Well, like I, I started doing this podcast uh, as therapy. That's why I like I just like okay, I, I I I'm from Toronto and then I moved to Hamilton and I was like I noticed that there's like a, a real lack of uh, black people and <laughs> I just and and so I was like I was reaching out to other people in smaller towns. Like I, I had a, I, the first guy I did this podcast with was from uh, London uh, and he moved to. Uh, Kitchener or something like that, and uh, yeah, so we, we reached out, we started talking, and then I, I ran into B, and we started talking about it. So, like, really, I started this podcast just as therapy, um, mm. just so I have other people to talk to, and then kind of reach out to other people. Yeah. We get a lot of white people that are like, "Oh, thanks for explaining this and explaining that," but really, sorry, white people, we, we that wasn't our goal. Like, we weren't trying to explain shit to you. We we're just trying to kind of vent. <laughs> yeah, we're glad you got something from it, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, talking it out for me and Shirley has always worked. We've always, you know, been able to to talk back and forth and to hear each other out and stuff. So yeah, I mean, when we have the mics on and stuff, it it, it totally is therapeutic. <laughs> you guys, you guys are noble, man. Uh, I did it for the chicks, man. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> How's that working no, no, out? Okay. Honestly, no. I, I guess I wanted to do what like like hip hop did for us, uh, like put Ottawa on put. 
my reality on the map. Uh-huh. And, uh, <laughs> and I would get discouraged at, wait, how come I'm not getting more listeners? You know what I mean? Like, I had that arrogance. I wanted, like, by the time my podcast was over, everyone would, okay, we know Ottawa, and there's a few black people in there and shit like that. Uh, yeah, that you, you're trying to put Ottawa on the map. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> like, Brooklyn, you wanted to do... <laughs> Where hip hop came from, that the land of <laughs> you know I mean? no one cares about not even people from Ottawa care about Ottawa. Anyway, all right, yeah. <laughs> it's a weird town, Ottawa, though, right? Like, it's just uh, I don't yeah. know, man, I don't know what's going on there. It's done at 10 o'clock. Yep, <laughs> like, no, no one, it's just a weird town, man. It's yeah, it's it's nice, like, don't get me wrong, it's just it's a ghost uh, town, it's a ghost town at 10. Actually, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there was a few podcasts here that I try to reach out. Um, um, oh, um, mutual friend, comedian Alex Wood had one, um, but we never got together before. But, but I know he had a podcast in Ottawa. So, who who was on your network? Uh, what podcasts were on your network? Well, we had well, Taste Like Fried Chicken was on the network, and that, I think that was it. I, I'm not. What was, my head uh, is so foggy right now. What what mm-hmm. was uh, what was Taste Like Fried Chicken about? Well, that was uh, there was this one guest that we had. Uh, well, she she used to phone in, and her name was Chill, mm-hmm. and she uh, was just an amazing uh, personality. And another listener that we had, in his name is Owen, and he was coming out of Halifax. Chill was in Miami. He's in Halifax, mm-hmm. and they winded up linking up on the phone and just decided, hey, why don't we give this podcasting a try? Because they, they enjoyed their conversations and they kept calling each other weekly. So they, I think they just decided to turn on some mics and they reached out to me and Shirley for some mentorship. And we just like, here you go. Here's, here's, let's get you kickstarted so you can start recording. Let's get you, uh, you know, on the, um, uh, on the website. And, and the, the, the thing is, like we talked about how time consuming podcasting is. What happened was is that a lot of time was also being needed to be consumed in helping uh, Owen and Chill kind of kickstart their thing. So it just it the love we had for doing all that stuff. We just you know we looked around and we're like, oh shit, like you know there's there's a lot of stuff that we need to 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 fix, or you know, there's a lot of stuff that we neglected. and We got to get the you know shit back on the rails. Mm-hmm. So that was the idea. Are, are they still doing their show? No, they're not. Oh, okay. I know. I I think they're still in contact, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, I know. Hey, it sounds like you like you guys really helped out a lot of people. Like you, you like people could c- come to you and, and just like, hey, uh, uh, how do I do this stuff? Is it is is that was that kind of your your mission or? Well, there's always uh, it, it was always the mission to you know be able to give back, mm-hmm. um, but. Like when we would have people come to us and ask us those things, you can tell the people that are in it to because they think they that that's what they want to do, and you can tell people that are in it because this is really what they want to do. Yeah. So, so as long as we could vet those, it was okay for us to dedicate some time to it because that's what we love doing. How how hmm. could you tell? Like when you're talking to someone, how could you tell? What's one of the tells that they had that you could tell? Like, hey, fuck, this person is just. <laughs> They're not, this is not a long haul for them. Um, usually, well, Shirley is able to vet these like just at the email level. She can like just spot it and oh, say like, shit. "No, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give this person my time." Um, and I think it's just the choice of language. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's sometimes you get language that feels like either entitled or feels like blocked or feels like it's just it's a weird mixture of like. This, the, what you're, they'll create issues that really don't seem like issues. And it, it, yeah, so there's just little, little kind of clues, and, and I can't really define them, but it's enough for us to say, like, yeah, we're not going to mess with this person. I, I, I get that as a stand up. Like, I, I've been in stand up for a long time. So I, I completely, right. I, I, I completely get what, like, you could just tell when someone's new and they're like, you go, oh, this person's going to be here for a while. I'm going to put some energy into that. 
And then you could tell when someone's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to be uh, Kevin Hart. So <laughs> what, where, where's that door? Where do I become Kevin Hart? And you're like, you know what? Dude, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to burn out because this is hard yeah, work. Yeah, where's, where's the magic, uh, you know, a comedy dust that you can sprinkle on my head so that way I can be funny? <laughs> exactly. Well, it's cocaine. But <laughs> well, you, it's still it's still not going to help you. It'll make you feel good. <laughs> I, I, the, the podcasting is kind of even like I would say in, in compared to stand up, it's got to be even harder because mm. it's such it, it's still kind of the wild west, and it's still kind of like at least it's comedy. I can go well if I go down to absolute or if I play the comedyness. There's a building yeah. that I can walk into, and they'll pay yeah. me money to do it. It's the podcast, I think you really have to love doing it. I think there's no yeah. other way to do it. I, I, I think you're going to be very disappointed if you think this is a, you know, it's rags to riches story for you. Yeah. And I, I think if you chase somebody else's vision of your podcast, then you're probably just going to get, wind up, you know, spinning around. And I think Shirley and I have talked about this too, is how important it is to understand your own vision and what it is you want to do mm. and to be able to at least move forward with some sense of like, I'm accomplishing something I want. Agreed. Here's a, here's a question I, based on what you just said, what's the average age of the person that you're like, Hey, I can help this person out. What it, did, I mean, um, I, I don't think that came into it. Mm. It was, it's really like, cause we've had people that have contacted us that are, you know, in their, uh, you know, early fifties mm-hmm. and we've had people contact us that are just getting out of college. Okay. okay. So it, it really kind of like varies, but you can tell by the language mm-hmm. that, they, that they use that it's like, whoa, yeah, this guy is a, this guy's a red flag. <laughs> are there any podcasts that you guys, uh, help launch that are that, that are like, grinding still and like being getting success successful uh, no i i wish i could say yes but no that's too bad about, uh, um, I, yeah. have, you've done a during your time you've done a lot of guest appearances on uh other podcasts yeah okay the, like you, you want to list them or <laughs> uh, <laughs> you oh, uh no it's all kind of a blur it was a while ago one of my uh, favorite is um uh, I, was it a val- no? Was it a New Year's or a Valentine's Day episode you did with uh, uh, Rod and Karen? With Rod and Karen, yeah, yeah. I thought it was kind of yeah, beautiful. Every time that we did a show with Rod and Karen, it was really, really awesome. And another uh, podcast that we we consider to be like really good friends with, and uh, it's the Interracial John, oh. and yeah, and they're out of like I think North Carolina mm. right now. And, um, yeah, I mean, we went to like Jamaica together. We, you know, hung out and they've, they've come through to see us here. We were planning a road trip to go see them, huh. but yeah, we've become like really good friends with, uh, Drew and Leslie. What up, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad that I've, I've, uh, 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 part of a lot of their successes how they've contacted so many American podcasts. Hmm. <laughs> and that's the part of the thing that impressed me. It's like, wow, <laughs> you got them yanks to like you. you know? Yeah, that's, you got, yeah, that, yeah. There's, no, that's that's awesome. <laughs> there's a, what do you call that? There's that uh, 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 inferiority complex. Can you, inferiority complex kicking in there? Like, oh yeah, wow. we all have it. That's just in the blood, though, right? That's in the bones. <laughs> we all got that. <laughs> it's, just, yeah. it's not American. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, I, I meant to add oh, one one of the things that I. I, I liked about uh, Chinilla's podcast, and uh, <laughs> I felt like, at one point Shirley was talking about how back in the day she used to be pro black, and um, and then and I like how that's one item, and then on the other item you had how you guys would take on um, topics of race, and how you were fluent in the conversation, like you weren't you weren't a white guy saying <laughs> no offense white guy things, you know, you were actually. Right. It, it, like, you know, I was like, wow. Like, and it was beautiful seeing the two of you interact like that. I thought it was a beautiful, like, I, I kind of envied your relationship kind of thing like that. I'm sorry to, uh, you know what I mean? It's kind of corny to say that, but uh, yeah, all right? Uh, no, I appreciate it because that's, I appreciate it very much because that's one of the, the goals that we have is to make sure that we hear each other, you yeah. know, and not just try and, like, shut each other down. And that's that's usually the the, the language you get from whiteness is mm. silencing language. Uh, it, it, do, you, do you get a lot of interracial couples listening to your podcast? Yeah, we do. But there's a lot of interracial couples that are in interracial relationships for the wrong reasons. Oh. And they don't quite understand the podcast. Okay. 
Mm. Yeah. Oh, what, what's uh, what's the wrong reasons? Like, you'll have you'll get interracial couples that'll be like, "No, we decided not to talk about race." Oh, and wow. on our Jeez. show, and, and on our show, we're like, "No, no, you have to talk about race." And we've called out interracial couples saying, "Like, if you're an interracial couple, and you're not talking about race, you're not you don't know the full partner that you're with." it's kind of disrespectful to be like, we're not going to talk about race when you're in, like if you're a white person dating a black person, because as a white person, you could ignore race. Like you can go right. through throughout your whole life and not have to deal with race as a black person. That's a daily thing to uh-huh. say. Right. We don't talk about race is just, I don't know. That's, you don't know <laughs> the person you're with. And, and yeah, you know, you that's don't a position of privilege to exactly. say like, this is something I wish doesn't exist. Yeah. And, and it makes me feel uncomfortable so we don't talk right. about it. Oh wow, that's like being in a, that's like being in a relationship that's you know your work. That's your job. You, you're like you're at right. the office <laughs> and you're code switching in your relationship. That's exactly, and that's and that's what I meant by being in a relation in, in an interracial relationship for the wrong reasons. Okay. Right, right. Wait, Gavin, you say you never met black people who don't like to talk about race? <laughs> I no, no. I, I've met black people that. No, I'm just saying, like, yeah, I, yeah. I've met black people that don't like to talk about race. It, and, and but I understand where that comes from. I'm not saying it's mm-hmm. right, but I I understand where it comes from. I also understand where white people don't want to talk about race. You know, and they don't see race. And I, but I, I, I have a short fuse for that now. Like, I just don't have time for it. If you can't handle race, like, I, I don't talk anymore where i'm like um i'm worried about white fragility so i just i'm because i I don't see it as a problem i don't see like my experience being a problem so i just kind of just talk and people get mad at me i get that but in a relationship where you're like oh i'm sharing a life with someone that's yeah that's kind of fucked up to me yeah yeah i i and it wasn't always like that like i wasn't always as ready to hear about shirley's experience Mm because there's there's a, a legit conditioning that comes from whiteness and, and white culture that, you know, it, it talks about how, you know, marginalized problems aren't real problems, you know, like you can, and whiteness does that. They'll point to other problems. They'll yeah. point to like, like, what about over here? Or what about over there? And this is a greater problem than this. And, you know, all lives matter, like yeah. all yeah. that kind of junk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I always tell B like, uh, we like as white people, coming up in that it's white supremacy like that whole system we came right. up in that too so like we mm-hmm. like to deprogram us like it, yeah. we have to be deprogrammed from that too like to, so yeah. that, that's yeah. got to be hard for white people to the, like if you've never been around and, and statistics show that most white people don't have to be around anybody other than white people that's just mm-hmm. they can live a whole life without being if you've never had to challenge yourself with somebody mm-hmm. else uh, or being around other people that's how can you can live a whole life and think that oh you know racism is just in your head or stop whining or shut the fuck up and I, I yeah I, I can't imagine being in a relationship like that that's yeah racism won't go away if yeah. you keep talking about it yeah yeah right right, right. Uh, real quick what I like also about the show is um, it helped me articulate a point that I, I was trying to make about interracial relationship it's like. Um, like when I'm on POF, uh, when I was on Plenty of Fish looking for girls, and they say I'm into black guys, I wanted to ask, hmm, what are your views on Black Lives Matter? Uh, you know, like I need you to be fluent yeah. in that kind of shit for us to actually get along. But the a new thing I wanted to bring up is uh, for Clove, what about uh, issues of feminism? <laughs> I find that that's been a challenge for me, like how you were talking about how it took you a while to, sometimes there was time you weren't willing to understand, to, to hear what she had to say. I find that sometimes when it comes to feminism, there are topics that it was difficult for me to understand, to adopt. So um, I'm, I'm wondering if that's the same for you. Like, are you, do, have you recognized your privilege as a male? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. And we've um, we've used it predictably. Mm-hmm. So, like, if uh, we wanted to rent an apartment, this is when we first started going out. We we could predictably say, like, you go and meet the landlord, and oh, we'll fuck. get the apartment that we want. That's exactly what we did. My wife's right too. That's <laughs> I I won't go. I let my wife yeah. go, and yeah. <laughs> Even car insurance, I let my wife talk and let her get it. 
That's so yeah, fucked and, up. And the thing about like when you start to, as a white man, starting to see the privilege through the conditioning, you start to use different language and you start, um, yeah. when you're interacting with other white people who may have not, you know, had some deconditioning or think that there's even any deconditioning that needs to happen. They, you know, you get that look like you're crazy. You get that look that, you know, you, you, you've gone over the deep end. How, how, what, what was de- what happened for you to go, Oh shit, this is a different world. There's another world. <laughs> um, I think it wasn't like a specific thing. It was kind of like a consistent messaging over time. Mm. Cause Shirley, uh, would always kind of just, point out like before we even you know learned about language like white privilege um surely would point out things like you know that that's you got that because of you're white Mm -hmm. and i would be like that's crazy that's absolutely insane we live in canada everybody's equal uh there's you know there's no racism but oof, man was i wrong yeah 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 statistic that's the other thing i I get in arguments with with dudes who talk about there's no racism and i'm like you just have to like there's there's actual facts and statistics to prove you wrong. It's not even like it's not even a feeling. There are uh, numbers. Yeah. If you can if you do a little bit of research, there are numbers uh-huh. saying that it exists. Yeah. I, I yeah, I guess when 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 the status quo keeps you comfortable. I yep. I I've 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 had friends here who I've let go who like who just accept like the I I have had someone who um they 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 misgendered uh, trans people on purpose, and I just be like, I can't I can't do it, man. I can't hang out with you anymore. And, and their arguments like, right. well, who cares? They're not getting violent. No one's getting beaten up. And I'm like, no, you don't right. understand. A bigot is a bigot. I can't do it. Right, 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 right. right. You can't. Yeah, you can't use, look at your they, mistake. They use coded words like snowflake. Yes, mm. yeah, it's stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. And I just I can't. I, I've I've had white dudes get mad at me in the last year or so, who mm. just because I'm. They're like, what's happened to you? You change. I'm like, I just. When you get smart enough, it's hard to go back the other way. Uh, yeah. 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 And and I've seen people, other people as well, like blogs that I that I uh, read. And there's a real weird kind of like, because you, you can stand up and say like, you know, I'm anti-racist. Um, and, but as soon as like feminism comes into the play, mm-hmm. usually that's when the most pushback happens. Mm-hmm. That's when, that's when like whatever system you're in if you introduce like the 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 um uh the moral not, not the morals but the, the what feminism stands for if you try to introduce that or if you try and point out that there's lacking some feminism here mm-hmm. um there's way more pushback on that hmm. i i i am like be uh with my wife i i struggle with the um, the emotional work is what i'm trying to work on more where it's just that <laughs> Like and it, it's very small, but it's day to day small, so it builds up. Like, yeah. Where it's just that ex- expectation to do certain things around the house or whatever. Right. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I'm, and I could imagine like having kids. How if we had kids, how much harder it would be. Mm. So that's one of the things I try to struggle with 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 my wife, just to be like, I got to see her point of view. I got to see her point of view. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really we, seeing someone as a human. I think it's pretty much. Yeah. Pretty it's much. Just seeing someone as a human. Yeah. 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 I had, uh, I had somebody say like, um, we were talking about the, uh, on Facebook, we were talking about, um, the disproportionate amount of, uh, black men being shot, unarmed black men being shot by, by the police. And, um, the pushback, the initial pushback was like, well, white people, you know, get shot by the police too. And I just, I couldn't help but think that that's their defense. Like it's mm-hmm. since a white life is being, used you know being like wasted then a black it's okay to waste a black life but it was it was such a disconnect from not understanding that if unarmed white people are also being shot by police then that is also a problem well yeah it's also it's like the oh white people were slaves too it's like yeah but that's not a it's that doesn't justify slavery it's like yeah everybody was a slave at one time so Let's not talk about Let's it. Let's not talk. It's like no, that means there's a system against us, and we need to right. fight that system. It's it's not a hey, shut the fuck up. It's a hey, yeah, there is a huge problem here. Yeah, it's right. uh, yeah, I yeah, I people, I I always uh, I, I I always uh, relate it to my dog when we tie our dog. Like we're like say we're at a picnic or something, and we tie our dog to a tree, and she becomes she starts guarding the tree. 
That's how I, I, I relate a lot of white people to the system. It's just like you're a dog <laughs> tied to the tree, and you're guarding this thing that doesn't give a shit about you. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it, yeah. That you know what's amazing be- about this conversation is it's made me realize that how we're all born on the, with the assumption that we treat everyone with respect. And then when someone comes up and says, hey, actually, uh, we get defensive about it. Yeah. So, so at first, yeah, we're, we're like we're in a point in time where um, uh, someone says, um, I'm gay. It's like, yeah, I'm OK with that. Well, actually, you're not, you know, uh, mm-hmm. thing, you know, uh, a public display of affection. I don't think it, I don't think I should have to stop because you have a problem. Yeah. with it, you know what I mean, or uh, uh, toxic masculinity concepts like that. Um, it's just we're in this, we're in this new world where it's in your benefit to learn from other people's experience, mm-hmm. or else uh, you're gonna be an asshole. You know what I mean? You'll be, you'll be considered an asshole. Yeah, you're gonna be left behind. You're gonna, it's gonna be like those movies where the the white guy is upset that black people are swimming in the pool. In the fifties, you're gonna be, you're gonna <laughs> right, be that right, guy. Right, right, right. <laughs> you're gonna be that there's guy. Gonna be, there's gonna be legitimate conversations happening for the better well-being of everybody, and you have just excused yourself from that conversation just because of the the language that you're using. Do you, I, yo, do you find? Beautiful. Sorry, sorry, B. Do you do you find yourself? No, you fucked up. Find white uh, uh, other white people on this stuff. Or even black people, for that matter. But like, yeah. sorry, say that again. Do you find yourself fighting other white people on this, or like having to like correct other white people on this stuff, like, like oh, yeah. how you were before? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Um, there's not. There's not. I don't know nearly as many white people that can see through this conditioning mm-hmm. than people that white people that don't. Like I, I, I remember one time um, I had a picture of my son at my desk, and this guy that I worked with came up to me and he said. He said, oh, hey, and he noticed he made the link and uh, he was like, oh, so so is it true that black people like this and like that? And I was like, oh, my God, dude. I was like, oh, my God. So I asked him, I said, do you know any black people? And he said, no. And I said, well, let me, I'm going to send you something. And I sent him the um, uh, unpacking the uh, privilege backpack. It's like this. Um, it's a three page PDF file that kind of exposes huh. a lot of things that are taken for granted by white people. And uh, when I sent it to him, he came back and he was legit angry. And he said, uh, you know, that was racist and I don't stand for racism. Wow. Yeah. That's a- <laughs> I, don't, I don't stand for racism. Meanwhile, yeah. 20 minutes before I did a whole bunch of racism at your desk. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I don't stand for it at all. Jesus, yeah. I didn't know you were working with Malcolm X. That's uh, <laughs> that guy is like serious. Wow, <laughs> I uh, I've st- I don't uh, I stopped pressuring uh, white people to uh, uh, stand up to racism only because, um, like I mean, you know, you are who you are. You either with part of the struggle, or you're not right. And the only reason I say that because that's an excuse for me. When my relatives start saying some homophobic shit or <laughs> something yeah. fucked up, yeah. and I don't say anything, because yeah. <laughs> my folks are religious. They're not like evil. Uh, they're religious. Uh, how they, they, so every once in a while, they'll say something stupid. And, you know what? That Donald Trump has a point about this. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think every family has that. I had a conversation yes. with my dad about Bill Cosby. He's like, I don't know. I'm like, Dad, it's 53 women. It's 53 women. And he said he did it. There's the other hint. <laughs> he said he did it. But I was at a barbecue and uh, <laughs> I was with a friend of mine. Uh, his name is Kunle. Hey, shout out to Kunle. And uh, he, uh, well, we were in the kitchen and I just happened to ask him, um, so have you been uh, up to date on all the uh, the debates, the Ontario debates? And uh, we talked for about 30 seconds and this guy just inserted himself into our conversation just like, well, you know, uh, because uh, Kunle was expe- explaining to me that that Doug Ford had a buck of beer uh, yeah. platform that he was doing or something. So I was like, what? A buck of beer? And this guy just came over and just jammed himself right between our conversations. Like, well, yeah, because, uh, you know, anything above a dollar is uh, is taxes. Do you, you want to pay more taxes? Like, he managed to turn that into taxes. I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> 
He was like, he was uh, sitting back with a whisper 3000, just listening to right. conversations. Right. Just like, who's talking about taxes? I'm going to jump in <laughs> yeah. on this one. Who's, that, who's talking shit about Doug Ford? <laughs> who's talking shit about Doug so, uh, uh, Excuse me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Don't yeah, actually. Um, actually. <laughs> So yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, we're back, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about uh, the internment camps in the in the states, but primarily in Canada because I, I see a lot of Canadians condemning Americans, like oh how these horrible yeah. Americans, and we we just we just settled a lawsuit for Native people uh, for the Scoop Sixty where they were kidnapping uh, the residential schools as well as outside of the residential schools up until about the late eighties in the nineties they. Uh, the government allowed people to uh, allowed uh, i guess welfare ser- well, 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 welfare services to kidnap uh children and then just send them all over the world so native kids because they felt they needed to i guess indoctrinate them into white families cuz you know native people can't raise their kids and they adopted they sent them out to all over the world and now all these kids or adults and they're suing the government. I believe they got 700,000 or 800,000. They were looking for 1.3 billion, which would be 85,000 for each person, which isn't much, but uh, after you're kidnapped and sent to a different country. Uh, yeah. But, you know, yeah, but everyone's upset about the Americans. But I, well, I guess for me, it's the constant Canada has this bad habit of, you know, God bless this country and all, I gotta start with that, but has this bad habit of, well, at least we're not like the Americans. It's like, ah, yeah. guys, uh, take it easy. Um, they're separating families over, he- over there. We did that o- over here. And the fact is, a lot of us didn't know this. Like, I had to read up on residential uh, schools. Like, everything you just said is stuff that I recently read up on, and it breaks my heart. Like, uh, not knowing this, finding this out now as mm-hmm. opposed to high school or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, shit, man. Well, the yeah. fact that's this is the argument with like the Sir John A. McDonald statues and the naming of the schools, right? Because he, the founding father of our country, he was the one that put these schools together. He's the one that came up with the native, the Indian Act. I'm not even gonna call it Native Act. It's called the Indian Act. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, and the only reason why they got rid of, they started getting rid of residential schools after. I guess the government, uh, they were, they went back to the Indian Act and they, they tried to renegotiate or change some of the wording in it and they realized how bad it was. But they killed so many kids that they didn't even write it down. Like they didn't keep mm-hmm. enough records. Wow. And uh, mm. that's, that's our past. That, and you could see it today. Like when you call him Bushi gets shot by someone and everyone's like, well, what's he doing on the ATV or what's he hanging out with those kids for? You know, right, it's, right. yeah, it, it, uh, yeah, it's a it's a horrible stain on there. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that um, Canada has uh, this this its own narrative of like um, really having a facade of being polite, friendly, and and really kind of like they're really good at erasure. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that starts like from from when you're in school. From uh, as a kid, like uh, B was saying, that there's there's no education on that. There's no the education on um, the uh, colonization of Canada is framed in a way that is made to look like some kind of agreement was happened, mm-hmm. right. and right. that that there was that this was all done um, with consent, and yep. it's not. Yeah, yeah. It is is I mean. Slave, slavery was looked at that way too, right? Like uh, for a while, not anymore in the states. But um, is it is it is it does that mean that we still live in a society that still holds those values, like of how what the how the country was created? Like, is it still maybe we're not killing native people, but we're sh- we're not helping them? Like, if you look at the stats, they're in the same situation as as black people in the states. Like, they're not. It's not good. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I, is it are we holding do we still hold those values here in Canada? And we just most people are just oblivious to it. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, it's 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 definitely um, a veneer that's kind of like um, pushed to the side. I mean, it's 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 almost an afterthought every time. Yeah. It's not like you hear about, um, you know, the truth and reconciliation. The only time that I started hearing about that coming into play 
was, you know, articles where they're saying, you know, like, what is this? This is this is more racism. You know, Canada's not racist. And it's like, well, it's not, uh, you know, talking about racism isn't the problem. Racism is the problem. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. <laughs> Message. Yeah, yeah. no. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. It, it, we, like, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to tell you a bad story. Uh, uh, you want to make your point? <laughs> well, I, I, was just, I, I was just going to say, how do we get past this shit if we can't even, we're not even allowed to talk uh, about it? Like, right, how do we right. solve a problem if we can't talk? We Like, just talking about it is that, that's where we're at. We're discussing whether yeah. we could talk about it. Yeah, so. and I think it has to be kind of like, um, I don't know, it, it's, it's, there has to be a willingness to hear somebody's story to, yeah. to, believe them and to to make sure that what you're hearing is you know comes from generations and generations of of conditioning to get to this point and it's not this this even playing field that uh whiteness likes to try and make it out to be mm. just uh i blame education for uh, a lot of current misunderstanding um just to give you an example and this is the bad story and uh we might lose some listeners right now okay uh, <laughs> growing up So my education was all in French, right? Okay. And then English was like on the streets or whatever, my friends and things like that, right? Same here. Okay. So you might relate to this, right? So on one end, I remember hearing these guys at school complain about the octoctons, right? Uh, That's basically the French uh, translation for indigenous people. And the way they talked about it, like so badly, like they were pests, like, oh, fuck, I was complaining about lands, uh... Uh, the uh, fucking protesting this, uh, they're bitching about that. And I'm listening to this, right? New to Canada or new to Canadian education or in history. I'm like, yeah, yeah, man, fuck. Yo, what the fuck is their problem? And then later, it's only later that I realized they were talking about Native Americans. I'm like, oh, you mean the people who were here before you fucking guys? Yeah. Like, right. it made, like, in the context of Native Americans who were here before, it made sense that the outrage. But when I looked at them as these, Octoctons or whatever, these these whatever, all those uh, pejoratives they would use in French. You know, it, like it's two percent on one end. They're disc- in French, they were pests. In English, uh, um, uh, you know, they were native. They were human beings, yeah. who fucking, uh, who were invaded in, in their own land. So you, you see the the disconnect I had, and it was only later I realized that they were talking about the same people. Well, so like, oh. like if, if your friends were like Sir Johnny McDonald, right? Say say we hey. say we had to like I don't know resettle this country. Say we're settling it today, the, uh-huh. there would be a lot of people who could step up and be Sir Johnny McDonald and starve right. a whole bunch of fucking native people out of the way to build a train track. Like, right. like it's not that far a hop, skip, and a jump. I like I got into arguments with people over like renaming that that statue, and they're like, "Well, that was back then, and that's how the attitudes were. People were just like that." I'm like, "Killing people." Like we're just uh-huh. genocide. Like genocide doesn't change. It's not an attitude of the of the day. It's not a fucking. It's not an umbrella. It's not a hoop dress. Yeah. It's genocide. Mm-hmm. And their and their ignorance doesn't lend any morality to it no, at all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It, it's it, it it's just accept the murder or accept whatever it is the treatment of people as less and you know let's let's move on. Uh, yeah, there's there's white folks that are straight up. Um, like proud of the conquering that has been done in the name of imperialism. Yep. Right. It's crazy. Right, right, right. It's like they agree, like might makes right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's easy to say when you're in the might position, when you right. identify with the might identity. Uh-huh. And those are the same people who are upset about what's happening in South Africa right now, too. They're right. <laughs> oh, man, dude, I literally lost it on a co-worker. I, I got to stop t- talking about race uh, at work. But, you know, they bring it out. Anyway, whatever. But um, this, this one white friend who's, you know, oblivious about race. And I think I'm the one who introduced him to the concept. But he was just talking, <laughs> we were talking about South Africa. And he said, yeah, man, I could never understand how the apartheid could have happened. Or it, it, he like it, it like he didn't Kanye West, did he? <laughs> Kanye West, no, it was more like like uh, apart. It's like. It's again that oh we in Canada are great people we could never reduce uh, ourselves to such a inhumane system like apartheid like fuck dude how do you not put to it how do you not link uh, uh, 
uh, what you did to the indigenous to apartheid. How the fuck do you not see the link between the two? Anyway, just we're uh, hop skipping a jump from the Third Reich. Like we're hops. I know that sounds hyperbole, but it's not. Right. We are hop skipping a jump from like any anything can happen. Never uh-huh. say we're too far from anything. And humans, I I was just watching this video about like because I had this argument with someone about talking, yeah. letting Nazis have uh, the the marketplace of ideas. And this was right. the, the guy was arguing that uh, we should let uh, Nazis have the marketplace of ideas because bad ideas will just weed themselves out. But that's not how the marketplace works. The right. marketplace uh, isn't about good or bad. Good or bad are just subjective. It's about right. attention. This is why uh, Trump got elected because it wasn't whether it was yeah. good or bad ideas. Is that he got the most attention? In the in marketplace yep. is how that's how marketplace works. It's who gets the most attention. So you could be a Nazi, get the most attention, and people start going, "Hey, you know what? That's a good idea." It's not yeah. about good or bad. There's no yeah. good or bad in the marketplace oh, of ideas. Yeah, I've I've heard people say that too. Where it's like, well, freedom. If if you're if somebody is not allowed to say their opinion on stuff. Um, then their freedom of speech is being like you know taken from them, and and that's that's you know not a good thing. And we have to support freedom of speech. And number one thing is support freedom of speech. And it's like, well, what if that freedom of speech includes lying to children? Yes. Right. Like, do, you, do, you, do you put do you put like a stamp on it? Do you say like this is this is unacceptable? Right. Exactly. And and, and, and if you can, if you can do that, if you can say it's unacceptable here and it's acceptable here then you have to be able to say, like, yeah, you don't get to talk at this table anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your, 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 your ideas are, like, let's be honest, we, we've debated, uh, um, what's that, what's that uh, when they, that, that the for, not for phrenology, but the, the, the study of whether black people are, are smart or not, or the IQ stuff. We, that, that oh stuff. my god! Are you, are you talking about Charles Murray? Yes, uh, Charles Murray. Yes. Yeah, that stuff has been debunked uh, years ago. Years ago, it's debunked, so we don't have to bring these debates up anymore. Uh, uh, They're yeah. old. It, the <laughs> Nazi is an old it's debate. You. We decided it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> it's years ago, but it's new to them. So wait, what? We've had this debate already. Wait, what? Well, uh, this, yeah, because that that's their world. Their world started when they were born. Yeah, like, there was nothing that happened before that. Mm-hmm. Man, I was. <laughs> I got a bit about that. Yeah, is that nar- that's, is that narcissism? Is that a narcissistic trait? Mm. I, I, you know what? I, I'm, I'm not sure if it w- it can be. I think you can be a narcissist and live in that bubble for mm-hmm. sure. But I think that bubble, when it comes to whiteness, is really conditioned. It's the it's the media that you see. Mm. It's everything that that envelops you in terms of like what you see the society as. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. Uh, are you guys surprised that uh, there are, um, and I don't want to turn this into a liberal versus conservative thing, but there are conservatives who do not see the link between what's going on with Donald Trump and the early days of, uh, uh, or the Nazi uh, upbringing. Well, there's like a- just, session, just Session was on CNN talking about, dude, there's no way this shit compares to Nazi Germany because they were trying to keep Germans inside the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah they, right. they, 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 it, I, I listen to a podcast called Chapo Trap House, and they talk about a lot of it. They talk about uh, uh, classism, and it's it, it's middle class white people who want fascism. They want they want some authoritarianism. Yeah. They want to go to a restaurant. Like they were talking about how, uh, like they're talking about the the this law they're trying to pass, where because uh, I guess waitresses were making like three dollars. And then you make out whatever you want. Uh, you make out the rest on tips. But what they're saying is, like, let's give them a guaranteed $15. And then after that, uh, they can make whatever else bonus on tips. And there's a campaign against it saying how they're going to take tips away. And they were talking about how this is, like, middle class people go into these restaurants. And they, like, the after church. And they put down these $1 bills on the table. And for everything that waitress does wrong, they take the dollar bill away. They take wow. $1 away, right? And it's just... It's that authoritarianism. It's they need to feel they're better than someone else. Yeah. yeah. And so this is why this is this is another. Oh well, these people got came over here illegally, so they yeah. love authority. A lot of people love fascism. It, this is just a, a yeah. thing that we yeah. have to accept. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's that. I, I like to use the word fascism there because that's pretty much what you you encounter is like this this adherence to you know why doesn't everybody just respect trump mm-hmm. why doesn't everybody just follow the rules like there's a oh, real yeah yeah <laughs> salute the commander <laughs> yeah 
What's funny? Uh, people love fascism. They just don't want to confess it. They just don't want to admit it. Well, it, well, it, it goes, well it's because they it's because they would survive well if it was fascist. Yes, mm-hmm. right, it, well, right. it, it goes well because like uh, this is this is the new. I, I've, I've been studying up on centrism, like people in the middle, and mm-hmm. if you look, oh, it's yeah. like a it's like a fish hook, and mm-hmm. people in the middle are closer to the right than they are to the left. That's yes, why they dude. hate Antifa, yeah. and they're closer to Nazism than they are mm-hmm. to the other side. So they that that is they don't understand that a lot like this freedom of speech rhetoric that everyone just kind of regurgitates without thinking or doing research uh-huh. it, this is the thing nazis are fucking smart the the those neo nazis those uh they're smart and they know how to in- infiltrate these centrist middle yes. of the road neoliberals they know how to just tell them to think a certain way that's what scares me about these people they don't uh-huh. understand the regurgitating neo nazi shit Shit. Yeah, they're they're like viruses. They just infiltrate. <laughs> yep. and they uh, you know, just spread their fucking bullshit. And it's like it's like you you can't help but say like, don't you see that even just supporting the status quo at this point, <laughs> people are dying from doing that. Exactly. And if you and yes, if you right. and if you're okay with that, then you know what what are you gonna do? Hey, you guys gonna be yeah. cry, man. You're making me think of a relative who uh, infected by that virus. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying this episode. If you are, do me a favor. Go to iTunes right now. Leave a comment. Leave a rating. It'll help us out so much. Hey, also, if you want to follow us on social media, that'd be great. You can follow us on Twitter at MRD Podcast, on Facebook at Master Race Debaters, and on Instagram at MRD Podcast. We're also on YouTube. If you got uh, comments and suggestions or just want to drop us and say, hey, fuck you guys, you can email us at masterrdpodcast at gmail.com. Yes, we'll take your emails. We'll respond. Trust me. We got nothing better to do. Anyway, here we go. Without further ado, me and be black getting back into it. Can I tell you this? I am so uncomfortable having this conversation. And that's what this woman said before this, because I know what's in my heart. And I know that I don't think anyone is different, better or worse based on the color of their skin. But I feel like there is nothing any of us can say right now without being judged. So, yeah, this is this is this is the last segment. It's our white tier segment. Uh, so recently, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the voice of the White House, Trump's voice. She's a bulldog, man. She is. She her her brother hung a dog. I don't know if you know that. That is fact. Wow, hung a dog. Not- <laughs> that is a fact. She hung a dog. Anyway, <laughs> out of fun, out of no reason. Wait, 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 wait. She hung a dog. No, her brother did. Oh, wow. <laughs> My gosh. If, wow. At, if for that no reason, insane. he's not a dog catcher. He's not like. There's no. I'm not saying that's a reason to hang a dog, but I'm just saying there's no. <laughs> there's no reason. Anyway. So she uh, she went to a restaurant with some of her family. It's in uh, I forget Pennsylvania or uh, anyway. She goes to this restaurant and they kick her out. And then she goes on the Twitter and start, starts complaining about this restaurant kicking her out and how unfair it is. However, she she tweets from her official Twitter account. Oh wow! Which that's illegal, isn't it? Like you can't like it's Trump tweeting from uh, talking about the. Uh, uh, the NFL, how he's in trouble now. He's there's a lawsuit. Like that, isn't that a freedom of speech problem? Mm. I'm not sure what you mean. Like well, I'm not sure. I I think if you work for the government, you can't you can't um, disparage a company or a worker uh. officially because then that's a freedom of speech issue. That's why the Colin Kaepernick uh, lawyer is suing. Um, is suing uh, uh, Trump. They, they, he's, it's a lawsuit for that very reason because he said, you know, fire these bums, get rid of these sons of bitches, not bums. He said, oh, oh, oh. Be- because he's flexing his authority. Exactly. And so freedom of speech protects you from the government. So this is uh, government is telling them that, is telling, you know, the NFL owners to fire players. Mm-hmm. But you don't hear anyone talking about it. Like no one's no all the freedom of speech people aren't saying shit about it. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. right. I, I don't know. I, you guys didn't hear about the Sarah Huckabee Sanders thing. Uh, no, no, I, I hadn't heard about it. Wait, I, no, I heard about. Well, okay, you just, I, I I had heard about it. Um, um, I was gonna pretend to be Uncle Ruckus and take offense to it, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> come to the rescue of this poor white woman. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> But 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 it's it, it, it's interesting how this is the same people who are telling folks. Uh, no, I think it's okay that uh, bakeries should not have to make um, uh, cakes for gay couples. 
right. Uh, it's, it's their right as a business, whatever, in, in that. But I mean, but of course, they don't see. It's interesting. They don't see the link. And because they don't see the link, we're the crazy ones. Well, but uh, you bring up a good point. Like, like you have to bake a cake is for, uh, for a gay person. You have to, you know, you, you can't. That's discrimination. Is this mm-hmm. discrimination, like kicking her out because of her political beliefs? Is that, would that be, because that's the argument of the right. And I, again, I'm, right. I'm playing the Uncle Ruckus. On this one right now, so is it is it wrong? Like, are they wrong to kick her out? Um, I think the only reason, like, if if she was being disruptive, then yeah, you know, this, it, regardless of her political views, if she's being disruptive, then sure they could they could kick her out. But I, I don't know if they kicking her out, like, because you know, uh, I I don't even know why they kicked her out. Well, they, this is this is the quote. I this is from a, a waiter. I served uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders for a total of two minutes before my owner kicked her, her out along with seven of her family members. Mm-hmm. So there, there was like just, they just don't approve with who she is. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm okay. Now, I, I get it. You know, um, like I, I guess I'm able to hear the, the arguments, but I'm in the position of, look, we are in 1935. So how does that, uh, Nazi Germany right now. Mm-hmm. And these people are taking us into an area like these are bad. Pe- I've established these guys as bad people. We're not having a. It's it's no longer human beings that I have disagreements with. No, uh-huh. these are people who are not out for my interest, and 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 they're sneaking behind like this this cult thing they got going. It's only a time before we hear about the atrocities and, and, and things like that. So I guess for me, I understand that stance. It's like, look, I don't approve of your. Uh, I believe you guys are toxic. Um, you're you're fascist. Um, uh, movement and it needs to stop. I'm trying to find a quote of someone who said it uh, perfectly. Um, she compared it to look. She compared it to kicking like how smokers have accepted that kid. Okay, what I have is toxic, so I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> I'm not gonna stick around non-smokers and shit like that. So she compared it to kicking out a smoker from um, uh, from the establishment. But I hear you. You can make up is it discrimination. I mean. If you know, I, I, I want to say something about the word discrimination because, like, if it means that, you know, if I'm having a, um, I don't know, if I'm having a talk with women and uh, some guy wants to insert himself to just be, like, the voice of opposition or just to be that, you know, toxic male in the room or whatever, I will gladly discriminate against that, against that guy and that ideology because it, it's, it's pointless, it's useless, it does nothing to advance us, you know, as people or, you know, to the, the healing journey that mm-hmm. Canada has to do, it, it does nothing for it. So but, you need to step to the side. I will, I will discriminate against those guys a hundred times out of a hundred. But you're not mm-hmm. a business. Like if you were a business and you did that, would that be different? Like I'm like you own. Uh, yeah. And you're like, hey, you uh, got to leave this business because uh, I can't. I can't deal. Although, like you, there is. You know what? You know what? I, I would I would serve them up until harassing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If their ideology starts coming across and it's harassing me or it's harassing my other patrons, I'd shut it down in a heart in a, in a quick second. Yeah, because mm-hmm. there could be an argument that it's threatening to people uh, mm-hmm. if you're if you're being aggressive and you're coming out and you're like, hey, you know what? I think women should be chained up to radiators, and you're like, you know what? I can't. You got to leave. Um, yeah. <laughs> So uh, the homelands. This is this, this is the the counter to uh, to Sarah Huckabee Sanders getting kicked out. I, I don't know if it's counter, but this is uh, that Homeland Security. Uh, Christian Nielsen. Do you guys know her? Uh, mm-hmm. She's the one that went on and said some horrible shit too. She they were dining in a Mexican restaurant. The irony oh, of it. Yeah. <laughs> so then support, supporters like just chanted her out of the restaurant. Yeah, they it, shamed her. Yeah, they they shamed her out. It would. I guess that's is that. I, to me, that's a better approach because they, they did that to Milo Yiannopoulos not that long ago too. Nazis get out, they screamed at him. To me, that's a better approach because it's like it keeps the, the restaurant out of legal trouble and it's just like these people should not be able to do anything in public without with comfort. You want to know something? I think I would go to court. I think I would like take the discrimination charge. I would put it on my my front window. I discriminate against Nazis. Huh? Right, yeah, you, you're, right. You're, you're absolutely. You know what? It, when it's Nazis, there's no tolerance. You're right. Yeah, yeah. There's no right. tolerance to Nazis. 
I, I, mean, I like that you say that. I, I've dealt with too many people who have tolerance to Nazis, and I don't. Right, right, yeah. Like I, I, I'm, I've been in conversation with somebody who said, like, well, you know, Hitler was pretty smart, and blah blah blah. And it's like, shut the fuck shut up. The he wanted to kill yeah. millions of people. Yeah. What, uh, if, if you're smart about it, that makes it even worse. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. stop patting yeah. these people on the fucking Patty back. Hey, I'm going to say something controversial, right? And uh, sorry, Gavin, That's something okay. like that. If you're a Nazi listening to this podcast, go fuck you. Kill yourself. Kill yourself right <laughs> now. Be find don't. a left, find be a rope. You know what I mean? Uh, iodine. Drink that shit, man. Drink it like Kool-Aid. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I Yeah, some, some one of the alt-right guys in Charlottesville killed himself a couple weeks ago. Did we ta- I don't know oh. if we talked about it. And uh, on Facebook, everyone, the people are like, good, good, ha ha, burnt. And then every once in a while, well, that's disgusting. He's a human <laughs> being. I'm like, no, nah, you're not a human being. But if you want to uh, end yeah. other people's lives, you stop being a human. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's like a mm-hmm. pedophile. You stop being a human to me. Mm-hmm. Nazis, pedophiles, and whoever else. Uh, murderers, they're, you're not a human. Sorry. Uh-huh. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'm trying to RIP to Heather Hayer. Um, that's the protester during the Charlottesville yep. protest who got, uh, they, they drove a car into a bunch of people and oh. she's who died. Yeah. So yeah, man, fuck that. I'm, I, I said, uh, uh, on the way to hell, remember her name. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. We, we, we're living in scary time, fellas. These are yep. scary, scary times. Amen, brother. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So. All right. I, I think, uh, we hit an hour, so I think we, I think we did it. I think it's. I think oh, we shit. <laughs> yeah, we did hit an hour. I mean, this was fun. Cool. Thanks for doing <laughs> yeah, this. Dude. It was, this was a, it was really nice meeting you. This was awesome. I'm glad we, we had this conversation. Oh, it's nice meeting you too. I could go on for another hour. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I, you know, I got to talk to my wife. <laughs> I got to spend time with her. <laughs> Should I have heard that? What the fuck? No, I just, no, I just got like- to spend time with her. It's a Sunday, and then, you know, we don't see each you other tomorrow. You the man! Yeah, I, like, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, but, uh, well, I yeah. appreciate you guys bringing me on. No, I'm so happy. So happy.